Hello and welcome to the India Hangout and a special with Business Standard where we look at growth and inflation and what lies ahead in the Union Budget 2014. Before we do that and we've got a very exciting panel of uh, guests today, we're going to be showcasing a nationwide survey uh, trying to gauge the people's mood on what they expect from the budget and more importantly what the budget means for them. To do that, I'm going to be joined by Yashwan Deshmukh of uh, Seawater, the polling agency, also joining us on the show today. Uh, Venu Kopal Dhut, uh, Chairman and Managing Director of the Videocon Group, Ambarish Balega, Market Analyst, Samiran Chakrabarti, Managing Director, Regional Head of Research at Standard Chartered, and of course, I'm joined by my co anchor, Ayaz Bevan. Okay, uh, so Ayaz, before we go into budget season, how does it feel? We all, uh, and we also got a match today. Good, good. Huh? As the odd man out from this uh, group of <laughs> people who talk and live and eat and drink and breathe business, uh, I think the, the, the fundamental issue is, uh, you know, to, to use that much repeated cough, uh, catchphrase, mm. din aenge ya nahi. Yeah. I think that's fundamentally the issue. Right. There's been a lot of expectation. Mm. I don't know how much of it is going to be met. Mm. And the, uh, the perception, the understanding of the lay person, because, you know, the nitty gritty of creating and what the budget really means, reading between the lines is not given to everybody. Right. They just want to know whether I'll have more money in my wallet. Yeah. And, whether, whether and that's spend exactly less, the question we'll less. ask. And we'll also ask that question or rather the question whether Ache Din Aane Wale Hain has been asked by uh, Yashwan and he's going to take us through that. Who uh, Yashwan is actually joining us, I, if I may uh, reveal from Indonesia. And yeah. Amrish, before we go into it, right. what's a, what are we going into this with? We had a railway budget which has already disappointed right. markets and markets have fallen since then. W what's the mood that we are uh, at stationed at at this point? Expectations are still very high. Hmm. I mean, we have seen the markets actually running up about 25-26% in the last couple of months. Although we have corrected a bit mm. since yesterday, mm. but still the expectation is that uh, mm. I mean, uh, yeah. so we have to get think, all our tenses right. Absolutely. Huh? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, as long as it's not yeah. gay. Huh? Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, because of which, in case there's a uh, disappointment tomorrow, mm. we, 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 we could have a decent correction. Okay. And I'm looking at that because it's a tightrope walk mm. for the finance minister. Mm. Looking at the way the finances are, mm. I don't think there'll be too many stops. Okay. And that's where it stands. Okay, Yashwan, uh, uh, take us through the key findings of uh, the survey. Uh, beginning, of course, or, or rather, let me allow you to uh, take it uh, the way you want. I think, and I'm, I'm looking at all the questions, and we've also got graphics playing while you speak. Yeah, I mean, there are two major things which uh, which I take it out from this particular survey. One, first one is uh, this amazingly high level of expectation of the middle class from the union government and Narendra Modi, uh, his ship. Uh, I guess uh, to do uh, with what they have gone through in the last few years, uh, rather their quality of life had nosedived in the last few years because of the, mostly because of the inflation. At the same time, um, there are a big number of Indians who feel that inflation is not going to go down. Uh, almost 30% of them, they do feel that it is going to go down and which uh, approximately collaborates with the, with the number of votes that the BJP had polled. But extremely high level, unrealistic high level of expectations, I would say, um, uh, as far as uh, Narendra Modi government is concerned. So it's a tightrope because uh, uh, we are dealing, and, and I'm glad that we have this uh, wonderful panel along with us because we are dealing on one hand market expectation, and another hand uh, with the consumer expectation. These are two different things, uh, I believe, but they are very much interlinked uh, um, uh, 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 at the end of the day. So, uh, as far as the Indian middle class is concerned, unrealistically high level of expectation with the Modi government and especially uh, uh, if they can tackle uh, the issue of personal taxation because we have been this question for many years, Govind, and you, you remember that we started this series when you were heading Bloomberg uh, uh, of asking the middle class how much is good enough uh, uh, for a family of four to have a decent uh, middle class living. This is a very subjective approach. But uh, again, having a middle class uh, living is a subjective it's approach itself because you know very well that there is no official definition, uh, uh, any other official definition as far as the uh, construction of middle class is concerned. Uh, interesting findings from the poll, uh, 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 Amrisha. How do you translate this? I mean, one interesting thing, of course, is that the expectations are still running high. Right after the elections, right. we had the entire, you know, the inflation mm. sh shock. It's not a shock because it's been high. Yes. Uh, you also had a situation where the monsoons have uh, started to play trots. So Absolutely. things have gone downhill in some ways. 
Uh, see, the first thing is the expectation that you'll have more money in your pocket hmm. through lower taxes. Hmm. I don't, I don't think that is possible. Okay. Looking at the way the finances are, hmm. what I would possibly look for hmm. is how does he manage the supply side issue? Mm -hmm. Because today, I don't think food grain production hmm. is not an issue. Hmm. Food, grain, food grain production is there. Hmm. Today we have a uh, issue with onion prices. Mm -hmm. Onion production is at high, mm. but still there is not enough in the market, mm. and because of which the prices are going up. Right, right. The issue is supply side, mm. and this is one of the items in the manifesto which mm. they have said that they'll manage the supply side issue, mm. and because of which the inflation will will, will come will uh, 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 come under control. Mm. I would like to see as to how much of allocation he does for this. Mm -hmm. Fine, intent could be there, mm. but can he execute it or not? Mm. Because most of this is state subject, mm. and they don't control all the states. Correct. So this is one big question mark which is there, mm. which I'll see as to how he manages that mm. through the budget. And can it be managed? I mean, that's the larger that's, question as that's, well, right? That's I mean, the whatever question. you say, yes. at the end of the day, what it only the delivery absolutely. Will so, 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 so possibly tomorrow we could see the intent mm. execution. I think we'll have to see it over the next couple of months. Right. I think the biggest challenge, Govind, is uh, how much of it is bluster and how much of it is possible. I think that's mm. really the issue. What you're saying, right. how, what can be executed mm. or not. The promises that have been made have been extraordinary, and they've raised actually exponentially the expectations. The expectations are very, very now. Powerful. The intent may be good, but also you need the expertise to, to right. you know, execute and within a certain time frame mm. because it's not mm. an open-ended scheme. Yeah. Mm. You have to deliver within a short time. And right. the biggest problem with people is that disillusionment or this disenchantment could be, could be quite fast. sets in very rapidly. Absolutely. And therefore, we are living in the age of social media and instant gratification. If it doesn't happen quick enough, everybody the disillusionment will be far more severe right. than the enchantment Absolutely. was. Right. So let's take, I'll take some, uh, you know, some comments that have come in. So there's one which says that we need spending to revive the economy, says uh, Ram. Uh, there's another one which says that, uh, uh, sir, forget saving, we are losing our past savings, it's negative growth, right? So maybe that's where the stock market can play some role. Uh, uh, there's also another uh, comment on that's true, people take home loans to evade interest uh, deduction. Uh, Amrish, let's, let's come back to what the markets, or rather if you were to look more specifically now, which part of the markets could be looking uh, good and which parts would still be concerned? Now if I'm looking at sectors and stocks. Uh, sectors and stocks, uh, sector wise, I think the high beta ones mm -hmm. are vulnerable right now. Okay. Because they are the ones which have shot up quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And there's a huge expectation. Mm -hmm regarding those sectors from mm. the budget, mm. especially uh, your infra capital goods space. Mm. So that is where possibly you could have a correction. Okay. Whereas the ones uh, which have held on, mm. uh, the so-called pharma, FMCG mm. and IT space, mm. I think that is where I don't think there'll be too much of a downside as such and mm. that could be a place to hide. Mm. Okay. So here's another question uh, which I don't know if Ambarish you want to try uh, answering uh, on Twitter. Ajay Markin said that BJP came to power over dismal economic performance but it seems that the new economic survey does not show such a dismal pic or a picture. What do you feel? Uh, it is improving no doubt. Yeah. And yes, I suppose UPA did their job hmm. in the last one year. Yeah. Or the last over to use uh, Ayaz. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Mm. so I think that should pay off to a certain extent. Mm. But I think the good work should be carried on mm. by the NDA mm. as promised by them. Mm. If that works out, yes, I suppose Achhe then we should see after the next 2024 20, months. Okay. Nothing, uh, nothing would happen overnight. Yeah. And I don't expect yeah. that. And I think that's quite clear. So, yeah. so is that a kind of a time frame threshold that you assign, say 20, 24 months? Uh, you know, because. Yeah. But is, is the, I mean, is the see, patience see, of the people see, see, the, I mean, that's, last that's, that that's, long? That's the th uh, uh, threshold which we are talking about. Mm. But does the market have that sort of a patience? I don't think mm. so. Mm. They need instant gratification. Right. And for that, they'll be looking at the budget for instant gratification. If that does not happen, mm. you have a crack. And that crack could be anywhere. Right. I mean, 6% to 8%. Uh, see, the key concern is going to be uh, for development. Mm. You need to spend. Mm. And where does the government get the money to spend? Mm -hmm. So, my feeling is that the only way government can I mean, uh, uh, I mean get people to spend mm. is by giving uh, tax swaps. Okay. For example, the major area which, which, which requires funds is infrastructure. Mm. If they provide swaps mm. for investing into infra projects, mm -hmm. I suppose you'll you'll have money flowing in. Mm. It's not the question that people don't have money. So you're saying that it's it's going to come from swaps. I mean, or the expectation is that it, it has come to be from swaps. Okay. 
because I mean otherwise why should I be investing in infra bonds if I'm not getting SOPs? Mm. I'm not expecting tax cuts, mm -hmm. but when I'm going to be investing, mm. I think I should get tax SOPs to invest. Okay. I think and, and to what extent can that actually trigger some serious flows into the market? That can actually uh, trigger serious flows, no doubt, because people are sitting on liquidity. Mm. It is not that people don't have money, mm. but that intention to write out a check was not there because you didn't know as to what your returns mm. would be. Mm. So at least now, if there's going to be clarity going ahead, mm -hmm. that things are improving, mm. you will have people investing, no doubt. Okay. Uh, Yashwant, I understand that you're back with us. Uh, okay, uh, you know, I, I was still trying to understand the demographic and uh, geographic uh, break up of your uh, sample for this uh, this survey that we've done. Uh, you're also you were also trying to establish through this survey uh, how much income do people really want, and that's uh, as I understood also was a surprise to you in some ways. Can you tell us why? The answer rather. That's a surprise to us in a big way. Hmm. Uh, for for a reason that you know uh, we in the urban middle class sector, especially living in the metropolitan, we are used to see. Uh, uh, see the high grades and we used to see okay this much is required but there are people around who have reported as low as uh, 1500 or 2000 rupees a month as their requirement to live with the four so so living or, or a decent living is a very subjective uh, thing and there are uh, purchase parity issues across India uh, the kind of lifestyle that you need to make in Delhi just 100 kilometers down Delhi, you don't need even 25% of that money to live over the minimum basic uh, decent living to uh, for a family. So uh, it was very hard. It is always very humbling to know what the common people and, and their expectation is very low as far as their income is. But this middle class, which is ballooning now, almost 30% uh, of India, as we know, is uh, can be figured out to be a ranging middle class and uh, and approximately we have seen in the last couple of years we are more coming more over somewhere between 30 to 35000 rupees a month kind of uh, income feel is is minimum that they need to to raise a four with a with a with a, with a relatively uh, decent middle class living. Uh, Samiran, uh, your sense on what your uh, house view is as you're going into the budget uh, with in terms of uh, expectations and likely pronouncements? Well, we think that uh, fiscal consolidation will be uh, one of the pillars of the budget and that's why we think that deviation from the interim budget target of 4.1% of GDP would be minimal. Uh, to achieve that, our sense is that the finance ministry will announce a more reasonable tax revenue growth target of somewhere in the range of 15 to 17 percent uh, compared to the 21 percent which is there in the interim budget. Uh, but at the same time, he does not have too much leeway in increasing the expenditure uh, where it's likely to be a 10 to 12 percent growth in expenditure so the shortfall is going to be bridged uh, by a very large uh, component of uh, divestment spending. We think that it could be in the range of about 75,000, 80,000 crore. Uh, overall, beyond the numbers, I think the market is looking for a credible plan of fiscal consolidation going forward, as well as measures to improve the tax revenue, measures to reduce the subsidy, uh, significantly, particularly on the fuel and fertilizer subsidy. Uh, yes, not everything can be announced in one budget, but the big challenge for this budget is going to be balancing between fiscal consolidation and uh, spurring growth. Uh, that's the fine line that the finance minister will have to walk on. Right. So, uh, and, and I guess it also seems that the, uh, the solutions would be somewhat traditional and maybe no magic can or magical moves can be expected. What's your sense on inflation overall, uh, Samiran? I mean, you know, uh, I mean, because we started out by saying that growth and inflation are the two twin challenges uh, in this budget and in, in this really in, in, in this entire period that we are in. Uh, how do you think that could be better addressed, if at all? Uh, yes, uh, we are having very high uh, inflation rates for almost three years now. And this is happening uh, regardless of uh, substantial increase in agricultural production. 
uh, food inflation uh, seems to be extremely sticky. So I don't think the budget will have any magic bullets for inflation. Uh, inflation fighting, as we've seen, has started from addressing the issue of the gap between the wholesale price and the retail price, which is often more than 100%. I think that's the inefficiency which needs to be addressed. And for that, you need to, the, what the budget can do is incentivize uh, investment into storage and distribution. Um, but beyond that, one needs to go and change the APMC Act, uh, the issue of Monday taxes, the issue of hoarding. So all those are issues which are probably beyond the scope of the budget but are required to bring down inflation, particularly uh, in the context of deficient rainfall, which we are staring at. One of the questions uh, 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 the poll has asked is, what role does the union budget play in the life of an individual? And do you take decisions anymore keeping uh, the union budget in mind? Uh, and the answer is interesting that 60, uh, I mean, 60 percent plus of respondents say that the union budget has a role to play. Uh, and uh, so therefore, it, people feel that it affects their lives, it affects their consumption or their purchasing power and so on. Well, uh, in comparison to last year or a couple of years, this response has gone up. This is uh, actually surprising for me. And uh, it has gone up largely because of the expectation, I would, uh, that they feel that the government is going to do something which is going to impact them in a positive way, that the inflation is going to come down or the taxation would be relieved, uh, relieved a, a bit further. Uh, in the last few years, this number really going down in a steep way because somehow people were disillusioned and, uh, and feeling that come up way, whatever union government does, it is only going to uh, end up in something bad for them, end up in something negative for them, and there is life is going to get uh, uh, in a much worse way. So, uh, so there, there was a there was a sense of uh, sense of this uh, uh, dis, uh, from this union budget and, and this exercise that uh, nothing really is going to come out of it. And all of this new government in, and all of a sudden this high level of expectation, and all of a sudden we are looking at this big, but they looking at it and feeling something positive can come out of it. And uh, 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 and if it doesn't, then then I, I must warn that. Uh, the Achetin concept uh, could very well retaliate as well. Right. Okay. Uh, let me. I think we've uh, managed to get Mr. Venugopal Dut back. Uh, Mr. Dut, I was asking you about how you're seeing this environment at this point with all these sort of high expectations. Is it translating into similar expectations and as high aspirations on the consumer side? Consumers are expecting a lot from the budget. The basic is that consumer has been given a promise by the government, this government, new government, that inflation will go down. So consumer want that how the inflation will go down and how the things will improve in time to come because the price rise is very, very high. Second thing, consumer wants to know whether they will be uh, at lower income level, where will be the increase, increase in tax or what. Because increase in tax, people don't like. Uh, they say that rich people are there, they, they, you can tax rich people, but don't tax us. This is the first budget this government is giving. The consumer may not expect a lot, but in a five years plan, consumer, now they are learned people. They want to know also in five years how government will eradicate this poverty line, poverty also, and how government will con conquer the rising, high rising prices. These two things consumer will definitely like to know. Further, consumer also would like to have the reduction in taxes and also GST implementation and um, what I say, fiscal consolidation, fiscal uh, by bringing fiscal deficit down and also revenue uh, revenue also in control re revenue to increase and expenditure uh, to, to go down. That means revenue deficit should not be there. And today it has been mentioned that FRBM Act will also be there. Today the FRBM Act, there is no compulsory that the, they should government should follow it. You're saying that government should control expenditure, which of course uh, will be will be good for the economy. Just one quick question, uh, Mr. Dut. What would you expect so that uh, or uh, hope that the budget does so as to improve the uh, the, the your pricing power and your ability to be uh, from a business point of view 
more profitable and therefore deliver, uh, let's say, more products or services to the consumer? I would say only two points is very, very important required. One is the steps to control the inflation in a time-bound program, and other is that foreigners have lost interest in India. Everywhere the contracts are getting broker, everywhere the licenses are cancelled, everywhere retrospectualization is going on. What is happening? So foreigners would like to know before they are putting their money here, they would like to know what government is going to give the policy statement. And if they give a correct policy statement, there will be huge foreign money coming in here in India because India is a land of making many people know. Here a lot of convention is there and that could be utilized everywhere. Right, Mr. Dhut, uh, thank you so much for joining us and uh, taking us through both the consumer uh, side as well as the, the broader fiscal uh, side of the equation. Uh, let's, as we sum up, uh, Ambarish, what's your, uh, you know, your two or three key uh, wants and uh, potential disappointment, as in what you do not want from... Ah, see, I mean, uh, like I said, I don't expect uh, too many swaps, mm. other than possibly a swap for investing in the infrastructure, infrastructure yeah. bonds. I mm. think that should be the one to kickstart the economy. Mm -hmm. and I think that is very important. Mm. Other than the non-revenue, non-finance thing, what I would look for in, uh, in this budget is how will we make doing business in India mm. easier? Mm. I think that's what most of the businessmen want. Yeah, and that Whether sort of goes to absolutely. what Mr. Dhut was saying. Absolutely, well, okay? absolutely. That's mm. something which is Im uh, important. And the other one also where, where I would be a bit concerned, I think one of the major planks of this budget mm. is going to be divestment, mm -hmm. 70,000 crores. Mm. And again, that divestment would be based on mm. how the markets are going to perform. Correct. So that again could be a question mark, you never know, because mm. even in the past we had UPA government mm. announcing divestment, but mm. it never happened, mm. basically because the markets were not, were not performing. Mm. Here we are going with the presumption mm. that the markets will perform and because of that you will have the divestment. Mm. Right. So I think that, that could be a question mark. Yeah, and therefore we are obviously depending on the markets yes. holding way there. Uh, Yashwan, last word from you. Uh, you know, uh, what's the kind of takeaway that we should be most concerned about as we uh, go into budget and then the whole season beyond that? We certainly don't expect uh, to perform a cardiac surgery on a patient and ask the patient to run uh, for a 100 meter Olympic dash the next day. So, uh, uh, no, no, and as far as as well is concerned, I don't have any falls from from this budget of this government, but there are a big number of people suffering from high inflation and, and, and finding it really difficult to make their ends meet. They do have high level of unrealistic expectation and the this government can do is to, uh, is to uh, provide some personal taxation relief uh, and, uh, and, and then try to see if the uh, public has some extra money left with them in order to cope up with the inflation till the time they come up with a long term policy initiatives to not only to conflation but also to take the country on a long term growth curve. That's exactly what's coming through the Sea Water Survey, exclusively shared uh, on this discussion as well. I asked. Yeah, you want me to sum up? I think people don't want to spend more money. Yeah. Certainly not pay more tax. Yes. They want things to get a little cheaper. But what's encouraging, if I read it correct from Yashwan's uh, you know, survey, mm. is that 60% of the people still have very high expectations. That means they're still bullish or positive about it, mm. which is in, actually in contrast to the, the fact that 31% voted for the BJP. Mm. Mm. So if 60% people still, I, I hope that correlation is valid mm. and it's not invalid, but it still seems that the country still is looking at this whole, you know, the budget and beyond positively. Right. So we are still living in an era of optimism and optimism. hope and that's what is the most important thing to yeah. close our discussion yeah. on. Yeah. Ambrish, any last word? Absolutely. I think, uh, I mean, all of us live on hope. Yeah. And uh, there is a hope that this government will deliver. Yeah. And that's what I think people are expecting from the budget. And that's budget. one thing that yeah. the, uh, the Union Budget 2014 Absolutely. shall hopefully uh, point in the right direction. That's all we have time for on this uh, special edition of India Hangout in partnership with Business Standard. Thanks for watching. We'll be back shortly.